so today we will prove a very important identity um, which is used in uh, discrete probability distributions especially the hypergeometric distribution which we will cover uh, in, a, in a future video so what we are going to prove is that this summation on the left hand side r is equal to 0 to k um, mr which is the combination and n k minus r this is equal to m plus 1 c k so just a quick recap that n k this is also written as n c k and which is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial now in order to prove this we will use um, two simple facts that if k is less than 0 or k is greater than n then this combination this is equal to 0 now let's get to business now start with the binomial formula we have 1 plus x to the n this is equal to i is equal to 0 to n n i x i now if i put x is equal to 1 i will get 2 to the n this is equal to i is equal to 0 to n n i ok this is another thing now let's start the proof now the proof is <coughs> usually uh, there are three types of proof which is <coughs> which are typically uh, used for proving this identity one is geometric one is algebraic and one is combinatoric combinatorial now the combinatorial proof is uh, used uh, by exploiting the hypergeometric distribution so, and uh, uh, what i find the simplest is the algebraic proof so the algebraic proof is using this identity so let's see we have 2 to the m plus n this is equal to 2 to the m times 2 to the n now let's expand this and expand this using the binomial theorem so this is equal to i is equal to 0 to m m i and just m i and this guy is equal to j is equal to 0 to n n j okay now let's write the summation like this i is equal to 0 to m j is equal to 0 to n m i n j now let's make a change of variable now let's use k is equal to i plus j okay so then our j will be equal to k minus i and when j is equal to 0 this means k is equal to i when j is equal to n uh oh sorry j is equal to n this means k is equal to i plus n okay so let's write the summation again so we have i is equal to 0 to m k is equal to i to i plus n m i n k minus i now what we want to do is what we want to do is that we want to interchange the order of this summation so what we want is we want summation k here and summation i here and the function won't change okay okay so this is actually the same idea as uh, is used in calculus when we have a double integral and we want to change the order of integration okay so let's go through this uh, in us uh, systematic way so let's see we have n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 3 then we have i going from 0 to m which means i goes from 0 to 3 and we have k going from 
i to i plus n so you see you can see that in the first column it is going from 0 to 4 second column it is going from 1 to 5 and so on okay okay now now note that we are doing it column wise so we we are summing the first column then the second column then the third column and the fourth column what we want to do is if we want to inter interchange the order of summation we want to sum it in the fashion in which the rows are considered first so we want to do first row second row and so on but there is a problem here the problem is that each row has different number of items here and we cannot find a fixed relationship between i and k if we go row wise okay so what we do is we introduced these points and these points now note that we can do this because the function for these points is zero why because let's say these points these points are when k is greater than i plus n in other words k minus i is greater than n so if the argument which is downstairs in the combination this is greater than the out argument which is upstairs then we have a zero here and similarly in these items we have i greater than m so we have the first combination going to zero so but if we do that what what gain do we get what we get is that we can find a relationship now we can say that i goes from 0 to k so you can see that at every row we have i for the first row we have i f only 0 then the second row we have i going from 0 to 1 and for the seventh row we can say i going from 0 to 7 so then what we can say is we can say i is equal to 0 to k m i n k minus i and what are the limits for k k goes from 0 to 7 which is 0 to m plus n so k going from 0 to m plus n okay so this guy is equal to is this is the final form of our 2 to the m times 2 to the n now we come to the right hand side so right hand side is straightforward we have 2 to the m plus n so let's write it like this we have k is equal to 0 to m plus n m plus n k okay now let's compare this guy with this guy now in this guy our first summation is k is equal to 0 to m plus n here and k is equal to 0 to m plus n here so the next term is this here and this whole thing here so since they both represent the same value then we can conclude easily that we have m plus n to the k this is equal to summation i is equal to 0 to k m i n k minus i